firearm or you train with firearm, chances are you have a belt and you have that belt set up for whatever it is you're training for, whatever purpose you have. So what we did today was we went and grabbed two of our friends. One is Josh Lowry from Dirty Civilian. You might recognize that guy. And also a good friend of mine named Zach, who's a law enforcement officer here in Tennessee. So we're gonna break down the different whys behind belt setups, as well as break down all the different types of belts you might be using out there. So before we get into that, if you like this content we're putting out, if you like our channel, or this is your second time being here, whatever, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. I don't know where it's at, it's somewhere over here. But hit that for us, that helps us out a lot. If you don't like it, don't hit the button. Gun belts, war belts, tactical belts, competition belts, uh, your pistol belt, your equipment belt, your tool belt, whatever you call it. With all that said, there's all these different names for this stuff, but we know that we're gonna keep our equipment on our belt, whether it's a gun or more than that. You might have different reasons to carry a taser, or you might have different reasons to carry more medical equipment or a rangefinder or something like that. But whatever it is, we gotta break down the different types of belts out there and then understand their purpose. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna break that down. Before we do that, I've got to introduce you to Zach and Josh. And you guys might have noticed Josh before. He's what we call a celebrity, okay? <laughs> so Josh joined us from Dirty Civilian. He's been a good friend for a lot of years. Uh, so he's going to be here with us. Josh, can you tell our audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I, uh, I'm one of the, the two founders of Dirty Civilian. Um, the purpose for what we do is just sharing information in regards to these kinds of topics, being on the range, being prepared, uh, having an awareness for what's going on in the world and what we as just everyday individuals can be doing to be staying staying prepared yeah. and having an awareness for uh, the state of the world as it progresses. Yeah, and that's something that with what you guys do, I really appreciate it, man. It's awesome. We get, you guys should definitely check them out. Uh, great information being put out there. All kinds of stuff too. We were talking about it earlier, kind of a jack of all trades. You know what I mean? And that's really important for what you guys are putting out. Right. So all that. Check them out, Dirty Civilian. And then we have this strapping gentleman right here. So Zach, man, he's been good to know you for a few years. Uh, you're an extremely professional law enforcement officer. Um, respect you a lot. And it's really cool getting you to kind of explain why uh, law enforcement officers set up their belts the way they do and some of the stuff you look at. You mind telling everybody, you know, kind of a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm Zach. I work for a police department in the middle of Tennessee area. I've been there about 11 years. I'm in the upper level management. Unfortunately now, I miss the streets. Um, but unfortunately, you have to promote. I'm also in charge of our tactical team. I have uh, been on a tactical team for approximately 10 years, so I do have a passion about gear. It's that whole thing, look good, feel good, feel good, play good kind of stuff. So I try to emulate that and research and do my own stuff and have uh, the best gear out there and understand why you're setting stuff up the way you do and make sure it works for you. It's not necessarily gonna make you a better officer or a better prepared civilian or a better soldier, but you want the gear to work for you and to help you uh, be better with that. Fair enough, man. Good. So let's kind of break down first, guys, the different types of belts out there. So probably the most common belt that you guys are going to see is your traditional, or your, I wouldn't say traditional, but the newer style that a lot of people use is kind of that over under, right? So on the bottom, you have an inner belt. It's probably going to look a lot like this goes in your belt loops. You got your soft loop, usually on the outside. Some companies do it the opposite way, but you got your, um, loop on this side of the soft portion that goes here and then you attach the belt on top of it so it goes right on top right so with these belts great belts right got popular probably well yeah really started getting probably maybe 10 years ago i would say 15 yeah. something like that but i was still in the military i don't know so 10 years ago something like that so they got popular and let's talk about a little bit of those advantages right so why do they want to use a belt that has the inner and the outer well one it's more secure and by doing that, I noticed that it gives us a little bit more mobility, and more mobility in the hips because it's not this big obtrusive thing, you know, around your waist. You know what I mean? You guys seen that too? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yep. The other thing is, if you are wearing something like a, a thick leather belt that's working to keep your pants up, and then you're putting equipment on that or another belt on top of it, man, now you're stacking a lot of pieces that weren't originally designed to function together, and it can feel really cumbersome. Yeah, and then you're getting that shifting around and stuff too. Exactly. So some companies, we'll talk about it in a second with different overbelts, have tried to fix that with an overbelt. But really this is about the security of your equipment. It stays on your hips. You usually don't have to have as big or as thick of a belt here. This can be pushing down on your hip flexors and impinging your hips and up in your sides. So it feels a little bit more comfortable and so on and so forth. So we see that this is our belt. So this is the Bear Solutions belt. This is not a advertisement for our belt, but go buy a belt. They're pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> But seriously, great belts. Uh, no, so that's what we did with ours. If you look at some of the others too, 
you got this one. This is a Raptor Tactical Belt. This is a great company out of, uh, I think they're in Fayetteville, North Carolina, outside of Fort Bragg, or Fort, whatever the f you call it now, whatever. It's Fort Bragg. Um, <laughs> so that, they made this one too. Same concept. You can see that the Velcro is on the inside, uh, but they put these, what are these called? Pals, Pals slots? Yeah. Yeah, it's like Molly, right? There's Pals webbing. You'll see like stitch on the outside. They actually just laser cut the material, so it weaves through that. Great product. I will say the one thing that they did that was different from other people. You know how you usually have that running end to your belt when you tighten it? Absolutely. They hit it. So oh, right that's there. Nice. So it doesn't loosen up on your anything and it goes back and got a little bit more Molly attachments. That's a great one right there. And usually these are usually secured with a Cobra style buckle or a Raptor buckle. So usually with these, you can only attach Molly or like the Blade, Blade Tech Tech Locks, I think they're called, yep, they just yep. clip on top. So that's kind of that general style of belt. With ours, you can actually use the Molly and Safari Lens ELS with a whole pattern on there, but you can get to our website and check that out. So that's your general over under belt, right? So your Velcro over the top. Now, how many of you guys used, um, remember the old just battle belt? Like you just put it on, oh, yeah. that big sucker, big and clip and on top. Yep. Yeah. One of these guys, right? So what did you guys notice when y'all were using these pros and cons of this? So the one thing that I personally didn't like about it is it would have the propensity if you took off running or something like that, it could come up a yeah. little bit and it would bounce around. And I just, I wanted my stuff to be secure so I knew exactly where it was mm -hmm. if I needed to draw it or access that equipment. So I was big about making sure my stuff was secure. And with that, it just, it would tend to bounce around. They did slide around a lot too. They shift left and right. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You lay down, you're, you know, working under a car or like you said, you're taking off on a sprint and you go to draw your gun and your holster and your pistol. It's not sitting at the exact same spot where it was right before you took off running or you go to reload and your mags are shifting around. So that's certainly a pain. Yeah. yeah. And depending on your body type too, like if you like a real skinny dudes, they'd get down and notice they get up. Now that belt's like up here. Yep. It looks like a chest. That's right? that's yeah. too low. It's like, well, that's a bad belt. It's like, nah, it's just kind of the design, right? The one thing that's nice about these, you can wear anything you want. Mop gear. Right, from your, you know, you probably, you're wearing like a loincloth at night. I'm sure that's how you sleep. <laughs> and, or whatever it is, your mop gear, like from the least amount of clothing to the most, you can just throw this on top. So this was really great. If you look at, um, you see some of those picture vids from like some of those cops in like Europe, yep. where they just like something happens and they're like in civilian cars, boom, and they just show up, they throw on the guy, they're in like running shoes and a pair of skinny <laughs> jeans. Well, they're throwing these on top, you know what I mean? Cause it's super fast. So that's kind of the advantage of this one. Um, so who makes some of these that are pretty good? So T-Rex Arms, this is from them. Uh, this just happens to be the one I have from, uh, and they have Coyote Tactical makes it. Inside's a little rubbery to prevent that slipping and stays in place a little bit better. Another company is Viking Tactics. Their Brokos belt and their over belts are great. So if you are tend to prefer these, then definitely look at Viking Tactics or this one from T-Rex Arms. They're pretty good. Yeah. So, all right. So getting down to those, we kind of got those traditional military style belts out of the way. And I know a lot, and well, they kind of originated with military, then everything kind of filters down and because that's what we test of. But then we get to some of the others. Um, and we're going to get to y'all's in a minute. But if you look at that, then we come to Velcro only. So Velcro only means there's really no attachment or closure system like a buckle. It just overlaps on itself. So this is a competition belt set up that I have, and this was set up for an open gun. You've got your hanger holster, you've got, you know, mag pouches. We'll talk about those later, but this is just a stiff, rigid belt that closes on top of itself just with Velcro because they don't care about all that stuff. There's no need to have Cobra buckles and monkey tails and med pouches <laughs> in a shooting competition. Can you wear that stuff? Yeah, dude. But like, it's just easy to throw on. It still has an underbelt on the inside, but you're gonna see this kind of stuff is really popular with competition shooting and they're great too. So if this is all you need, then that's all you need, really. What else have you guys noticed about the different styles of belts or anything in particular, some of the advantages or, or disadvantages of these or what you've noticed? Well, some brands, you know, they'll lean more towards a, a soft, I don't want to say flimsy, but it is a little bit flimsy and it can be more comfortable yeah. to a degree because it's not going to be pinching or biting, cutting off blood flow at your hips. Then again, not having that rigidity <laughs> means that you're going to have to cinch it down really tight mm. in order to get it stiff or secure to where, to where your body sits. So you may have to actually go find, and if you can go to a gun store and go try different styles, 
My personal preference, I have played with a lot of different brands. Um, this Bear Solutions belt fits what it is that I enjoy, and I'm not just saying that. I actually Fair really enough. do enjoy how it is not super stiff, whereas if you pick up this competition style belt, dude, it just stays in place. It's really, really rigid, and there's benefits to that. Um, so you may have to actually find what fits your body type, what it is that you're doing. If you're just standing on the flat range, or man, if you wanna be able to go for a run with that belt, there's different reasons. And you, you kind of touched on something, and Zach, this is probably really gonna to pertain to you. Some belts are designed to be worn all day long. Yeah. And for 24 hours at a time or whatever. Some belts are designed to be worn just for a few hours and what you need. So when you look at these different types of belts, what's probably the one of the most, because you're wearing this all day. Yep. Yeah, in a vehicle, talking to people, you're having to, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure if, you're, if your belt is uncomfortable and you're a lot of back pain, that probably affects how, your interactions with some people sometimes, you know what I mean? Like yeah. and you're a professional, but you know what I mean? Like you don't want those little things, you know, coming yeah. up to bite you. No, absolutely. And, I, and that was what I was going to say is the one thing that you need to find is something that works for you. And it depends on what you're using it for. Yeah. You have the really stiff belts that hold everything securely into place. Then you have the flimsy belts that are more comfortable. You need to find that balance and test what works out for you. Yes. Uh, in my profession, we're sitting in cars all day long and yeah. we need something to be flexible. And unfortunately, you know, it varies depending on what agency that you're with and, and the demographic that you're serving, you might be in and out of your car all day, or you might be sitting in your car most of the day. So uh, I try to strike that balance between mm -hmm. comfort and security and the rigidity and the softness of the belt so that it is comfortable, but also so that it works for me and it serves the purposes that I need. Let's go ahead and go into the different purposes of our belts, right? So I say military belt, but that's just my background. So let's talk a little bit about this one. We're gonna talk about the law enforcement belt. And then Josh, basically we're gonna break down our belt setups and why we carry things in different places. And then lastly, we'll talk a little bit about competition. And I think there's been a lot of um, transfer, right? Because a lot of people, you know, the old tactical versus competition, <laughs> like it's so dumb, dude, just knock it off. Like it's fun. <laughs> so, but we're seeing a lot of little things like angled magazines now making their way over to guys that are carrying a gun as a profession, you know, stuff like this. And you've got one, I've got one, but let's go ahead and break down. Um, I'll start off with mine and we'll go from there. So when you're looking at your traditional kind of military belt, like, so what kind of things are military guys looking at putting on their belt? Well, one, it depends. It depends on what they're doing. It depends on the unit they're in. It depends on their capabilities. It depends on the mission. It depends on a lot of stuff. There's some people out there that have actually gone to putting almost nothing on their belt because they feel that they're faster. They're better assaulters that way. The only thing they got on their belt is a pistol. That's it. Some guys are like maybe a pistol mag or like they'll put their grenades, but like a lot of these guys, their belt never leaves their pants. So when they put their pants on, their belt's already on it. And mm. They just wear the same pair of stinky pants for like months, dude, it's <laughs> gross. So, but with that said, they want everything off because they notice the more weight on there, the less agile and athletic they are. So, but for a lot of people that doesn't bother them. So what are we looking at? Well, one, you're looking at your holster, right? So you're gonna look at the holster, you know, something with retention, your standard stuff. Uh, fair enough on that. We all know about holsters, but now let's break down some of the exercises. So here we've got our pistol mags, right? We've got a rifle mag carrier right here. We've got a dump pouch and then we've got our med kit. The only other thing you'll see a lot of times other than this is a, a monkey tail. So like an attachment system for the helicopters, which usually is clipped in the back it routes up to the front. So they unclip it, hook into the bird and then unclip it when they get out. And other than that, pistol mags, how they carry as many as they think they need, but here, I like to have this Safari Lane ELS system so I can take that off if I don't want it. And if for some reason I'm like, hey man, you know, I'm gonna carry a handheld flashlight on here. I can clip that on. Or if I wanna carry, you know, some specialty piece of equipment, I'm gonna clip that on, right? If I need an admin pouch right here, because now I'm dealing with uh, detainees, you know, and I'm doing biometrics and stuff like that, or I need extra medical stuff. I need a quick set up front. I might attach that instead, depending on the mission. Your mission for doing an assault on an objective is different for personnel recovery. Right, so we gotta think about that stuff. So a little bit of modularity. But using about two to three pistol mags on here, I want run one rifle mag on the belt, and then our dump pouch and our medical pouch in the back with a tourniquet on it. So let's talk about a, this is all pretty standard stuff, right? So why is rifle mag, we want that right off the hip. So I can grab it and it's what's called, we call it a fast mag. I wanna be able to reload that sucker fast and effectively if I take off my kit, but I got one on me. 
Now let's talk about a dump pouch. You guys like dump pouches? I do. I do too. What do you guys <laughs> use yours for? Snacks, Licky Chewies. Thank you. What else? Uh, just extra toys, water, whatever we need. Snacks. It's yeah. all snacks, yeah. dude. Yeah, it's all we snacks. put, there's, I put oh, my mate. ear pro. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I put ear pro in here. I have little stuff like this that I've never found a spot for to like adjust, you know, something. Um, but yeah, I put snacks in that bitch. All right. So when people are like, you're dump pouch stupid, it's like, I get hungry. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I'll tell you a quick story. We had a dude on my team named Frank. We go out, you know, leave the team house. Frank's big dude, 275 with a six pack, like six foot tall, ripped, just yoked right from Alabama. We'd go out on like, he'd be getting out of a truck. I remember until he got out of a truck, I was like, what's in his dump pouch? I was a new guy. Went over there, I was like, look at his dump pouch. I put out these muffins. He had like four <laughs> or five muffins in his dump pouch. And ever since then, I'm like, it's for snacks, right? Like, yeah, so man. that's, and you know, stuff like that. But yes, we're dropping empty magazines in there. It's basically an admin pouch that you can reach in and grab stuff for. So I think they're great, but if you don't like them, and I know there's a lot of you out there that are gonna say like, you don't need a dump pouch on this kind of belt. Well, of course not, but I, I want one. Sure. So, you know, we get hungry. These are great. Um, something to think about, is it, you know, the width of it? Is it easy to keep open? Does it keep shut on you? Can you shove your hand in there real easily and pull stuff out? Something you should think about. And then the med pouch we're usually carrying at the small of our back, right? And easily accessible with both hands so I can reach in one way, pull it straight out and access it or reach in the other way and pull it straight out and access it and then tourniquet on top. But other than that, that's your main military belt setup. This is what you're gonna see a lot of people running, right? This is just for the equipment we need because we're carrying body armor that has a lot of that extra stuff. Fair enough. Zach, what do you got? Yeah, so we'll get started. So obviously with the law enforcement belt, I spoke on it earlier, we're spending a lot of time sitting in our vehicle. So one of the big key components, and I actually learned it uh, going back to the basic police academy in 2011, is we try to keep the back of our belt as, as streamlined as possible. There's nothing on here. And the reason why we do that is because we're sitting in the car all day long. You don't want anything pressing on your kidneys or on your spine. You really want that comfortability. So with that being said, and the way uh, a lot of departments are teaching defensive tactics and stuff would be fighting. We try to push as much stuff to access with either hand that we can. So everything that I have on my belt that is laid out, I can access it with either hand. And that includes the radio, the taser. Uh, originally when my department started, we had a cross draw. Now you can draw it with either hand however you want to. Mine is just still left up with a cross draw so you don't uh, mistake that for the pistol. Uh, flashlight, flashlight's super important. Even if you're not working in the night, always carry at least one flashlight with you. That actually burnt me one time on a foot pursuit. I didn't have a flashlight on my belt, took off, flashlight was still in the car. Guy I took off. About that one, yeah. Yep, never found it. Supposedly, as the story goes, he was one legged, smoking a cigarette, drinking a beer while he's hopping a fence, running away from me. You live and you learn in the, uh, in the police department when you're young. Um, with us, we have to have, because of de-escalation, we're dealing with the public. Um, you're trying to, pro saving lives is the primary focus, right? So we don't necessarily want to have as much lethal force on there. So we do have extra tools. Um, my department, you don't have to carry like an aerosol or mm -hmm. an irritant. Uh, you have the option, you can carry a taser. I have a baton on there as well. Honestly, I use the baton still as a tool. I don't use it as a baton or a striking instrument anymore. You just have to have at least one. Obviously, that's going to vary by department and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Drew, I know you spoke on it, and then um, we see with the civilian belts and the competition belts, the angled mags, though you never want to have to change that mag. But if you do, yeah. you want it to be fast. And that's one of the things um, carrying over from competition and military is you're seeing a lot of departments and a lot of officers run this. Now, obviously that's gonna be dependent. Some of the, like uh, the Southern California agencies, they're pretty strict on what you can carry and what yeah. kind of stuff. And we'll see that later on with the old traditional style belts. A lot of the state police agencies, they're very, very strict on what kind of magazines and stuff you could carry. Uh, my department is pretty flexible. They want comfortability and user ability. So I do have an angled mag here. I have a standard mag here. The way this pouch is set up, it has elasticity. So I can carry a flashlight in it or a magazine in it. And then carrying over a tourniquet, always carry at least one. The way I have mine set up, because I'm sometime in plain clothes, I can remove my holster and my tourniquet always stays with my gun. And then finally, 
uh, the baton. Like I said, I'll just use it. I've always carried it, so I always uh, use it. And then um, the big thing, like I said, having that back slick so that you're not having yeah. stuff pressing on your spine and kidneys all day. Can you talk, um, being a vehicle, you know, a lot of people, the pistol be canted a certain way. Yeah. Is that for sitting in the vehicle? No, so it's actually, uh, I have found it. I did test it out. We did test it underneath the timer. It's a little bit quicker on the draw. It is actually, you see some guys now, they're really pushing that pistol forward. Mm -hmm. It is faster. I have found it's just not comfortable whatsoever sitting in the vehicle yeah. all day. So there is, again, that's that balance, like with the stiffness with the belts and then the softness. Same thing with the way the pistol's canted and how far it's pressed forward on your leg. Mm -hmm. When you're sitting on your leg or sitting on your behind all day, um, there is some level of comfortability. And if it pistol is pressed all the way forward, yeah. you just can't sit down all day. There's yeah. no way. Um, a lot of the guys were stealing from military guys and wanted to do draw up legs and all that kind of stuff. Kind of like Josh was talking about, you take off running and that holster is now on the front of your leg and yeah. you're going to draw it and it's all yeah, like, oh man. Um, so there is some balance with that. But yeah, it does help out a little bit. The one thing I found. Um, a lot of guys in the law enforcement community are running extended mags now because the quickest fast draw is the one, or excuse me, the quickest mag change is the one you never have to make. But a lot of this stuff, if your pistol is too far back, you got extended mag, it's pushing it because of the seat. The seat is not designed to wear these belts. And so yeah. a lot of with the bolsters, it's pushing your pistol forward. And so it makes it harder to draw. I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah. yeah like sitting there with an extended mag, like that makes a lot of sense. It's just pushing more forward. Yeah, you'll see a lot of guys that are running those extremely long magazines, and I'm yeah, like, I have no stuff. idea how you're sitting in a car all day because yeah. it's pushing. You also so walk forward. crooked and turn like yeah. this. And your hips are all shifted. Like, hey, man, you know. Yeah, and and you'll see too with uh, a lot of the law enforcement agencies, they're running three mag, three pistol mags, or they're also running a rifle mag. I tried that for a little bit. I just found that was a lot of weight to carry around eight, 10, 12 hours a day. That I just. It, man, yeah, if you need it, you need it. Mm -hmm. I just didn't find myself needing it a lot. So it come into, you're going in foot pursuits and you have this big weighted belt on, it's really slowing you down. What are you really doing all day long? Are you, I mean, yeah. if you're policing in Baghdad, yeah, I would wear all that. But yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's a, it becomes a little bit more, you're mimicking it just to get the kind of show, but. I kind of feel like law enforcement officers is a lot like baseball. Right. There's a lot of standing around doing nothing. Yep. You know, yeah, and then all of a sudden it's a full out sprint, Go you know, and like, so that potential for injury is real high in baseball Absolutely. players because baseball is, you know, boring. And so then they just have to, I'm just joking. So <laughs> like it's, you know, it is what it is. Right. So in a three hour game is 20 minutes of action. Right. So, yep. but they have to take off in that full sprint from just kind of standing there. I'm sure a lot of that's the same way. You know, if your body's tight, every ounce you put on that belt is just going to affect you more. It does. And, and, and obviously the older you get, you know, you're sitting down, your hip flexors are shortening. So then when you do stand up plus all that weight, that's why I've really, and obviously it depends on the agency, you know, yeah. we're in our agency, we're allowed to wear nylon. Some agencies have to wear leather or mm -hmm. wear the faux leather. The, I, and I was the guy that I was like, no, I always want to be pressed and shiny belt and all that kind of stuff. There comes a time that the comfortability is way, way more important. <laughs> is, now, obviously yeah. you still want to look professional. Yeah. Um, and you can still do that with a nylon belt. You just have to change the gear out a little bit more often to keep it clean. But yeah, man, you want to be comfortable because uh, age is undefeated in time, as they say. <laughs> what was that thing you said earlier? Uh, you're like comfort and you like lift yeah. them all off. Yeah. So there's a scale between, you know, being comfortable and serving the purpose. You There's a sliding scale that you want to do with that. Yeah, you want to be comfortable. It is also has to serve a purpose. Just like looking good. It, it You need to look good. You need to look professional. Uh, in our line of work, uh, officer presence is the first uh, use of force, as they say. Yeah. So you want to look good at it, and you don't want to look too tactical. Um, but you want to be able to do the job. You want to have the tools that you need. But you got to sit in a car 8, 10, 12 hours a day. So yeah, you got to make it home at the end of the day as well. Fair enough. Josh, have you seen this thing? What do you got? Could you imagine seeing Ooh. old Zach, Zach here's <laughs> old belt? Golly. Could you imagine wearing this for 10 hours a day? No, not at all. No, I don't even know how to wear this. It's shiny and it looks good, but. Oh, man. It's uh, not very comfortable. Wasn't the guy from the village people wearing this? <laughs> Just kidding. Can you tell us about this, like? Yeah, that, absolutely. So we've come a long way in equipment 
and what you guys are allowed to wear, we wear, you know, what you guys are allowed to wear and then what we were allowed to wear and then what you guys have the opportunity, you know, I'll say you guys, we're all the same and everybody's civilian in this country. Uh, but what's available on the market now and with the options we have. So we've come a long way from that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so this was kind of the, this is true leather. It's not the faux leather, it is the high gloss. This is still the belt that I wear uh, for dress occasions or whatever. You can even see with the magazines, I'm like, this is pretty advanced from what was initially issued where you had the snap I mean, closures the snaps, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, Voss, you look at the angled mags that are codex and all that kind of stuff. Still try to keep this set up as close as I can for dress occasions is stuff that I wear every day, just in case I am out in this, I do want to be prepared, but yeah, just it, this one is been worn a little bit. It's not as rigid as it used to be, but yeah. very uncomfortable to get it on. You would have to slide all the stuff out of place, cinch it down, then slide everything back in place. And these things, some of you might even know what these are and I'm not that old, but belt keepers, you would have to attach it to keep it because there is no, this is just solid leather. There's no way to attach this to your inner belt or to your yeah. pants. So you got to use uh, belt keepers to wrap around the belt to the inner belt to keep it in place. So it looks good. It, you, I mean, you're going to look great in it, but you're not going to be very comfortable. And it's yeah. not very, the way the pouches are, you can't really adjust them. There's not that modularity that you see now. Mm -hmm. So takes a hot minute to put on too, doesn't it? <laughs> and a hot minute to take off, if you know yeah. what I mean. Golly. When Sorry. the bathroom comes calling, <laughs> these things, <laughs> yeah. get them off quick. <laughs> Fair enough, man. Fair enough. So I can see why some of the guys, you know, you look at a lot of people, these belts, depending on what you got, they're going to cause injuries. And one of the big things we see, especially with, you know, setups like this, is that from a physical therapy point of view or, you know, some of the stuff that we noticed in my old unit because we have physical therapists and everything else, you get a lot of sciatic pain, right? You're getting a lot of hip impingements. You're getting hip imbalances to where one hip is actually cocked forward. And on the gun side, usually what happens is we get real tight through here. So your ribs actually shift over, the hip comes forward, and now you've got all this crazy sciatic pain. So you're not, wherever that gun is at, you can't hinge correctly. And that's just, as that compounds and snowballs and gets worse and worse over time, we see guys, you know, it just, it's real painful. So yeah, bad injuries happen. They get knee injuries on top of that, even shoulder injuries and thoracic tightness. So anyway, well, cool. Josh. Yeah, absolutely. Got, so uh, honestly, kind of the same setup as what you guys have yeah. in many ways, because as stressed, this all has a trickle down effect. Yeah. Um, one other thing that's worth pointing out in regards to canted mags, this doesn't have a really sharp angle on it at the moment, but if you are wearing armor, now the angle that I'm trying to get that magazine out of is not going straight into my plates. That's it. I'm pulling at a different angle. So it does get you, uh, you know, I can put an extended mag in there and because it's sitting at a, a sharper angle, it's not jamming into my plates, it's easier to get to. So there's more than one benefit to setting that at an angle. Uh, pretty simple, Velcro tourniquet goes on front, same as you guys, I want to be able to access that with both hands if need be, as well as if someone else needs to access this, I want them to be able to know right where it is. So I'll get to the one on the back, but I have one on the front and one on the back. Um, fast mag goes up front, that one's bolted on. I've been using those Blade Tech tech locks for pretty much all my belts for a long time, but because this can actually be bolted onto to the Bear Solutions belt, I wanted to try simplifying now that doesn't mean that I can easily pull that off if I need to, um, but there's less bulk to it. The S-TAC, pretty standard for those pistol mags. I really do like the S-TAC rifle mags as well. The added benefit is, I'm sure some of you guys have seen this too, I can easily put two extra pistol mags in here if need be. So I can jam that in there and I can plus up my extra pistol mags. Dump pouch, this one's a TRX dump pouch. Been a fan of that one for a long time. Now, for a while, I wasn't running medical on my belt. I had been using just a fanny pack. Mm. Throw that on over Those pretty much anything. Yeah. yeah, so if you're wearing a chest rigger plate carrier or EDC, for me, just a you know, concealed carry pistol, I can grab this and have medical. I also wanted to, if I am on the flat range, because let's be honest, as a civilian, that's where I'm using this the majority of the time. I don't want to have to sprint back to the truck yeah. and go find that medical. I wanted it to be on body. But in the name of versatility, because I have this, if I wanted to treat this as a GP pouch, I can absolutely reach in here, get rid of this medical, 
let's say I wanted to add a red headlamp. Yeah. Uh, you know, any of those other, not that I'm using flex cuffs, but it is now an extra GP pouch that I can throw on there, get a little bit more compact. Um, a multi-tool, I hate digging around for stuff in my <laughs> truck, you know, and yeah. there's plenty of times where I'll have a multi-tool on my plate carrier on my chest rig, but I don't have it on my belt. So yeah, this is a little bit bulky. There's a lot of stuff on here, but in many ways, this is a complete system for me. That's what I was going to say. It is, man. If you need anything, if that's in your truck or it's in your house somewhere, you know right where it's at. You have everything you need, right? You got the multi-tool on there. You can fix majority of problems. But basically what that belt is, is it's one big multi-tool. Exactly. You know? yep. So that jack of all trades thing, you got everything you need. If, that, if that's all that I got, I want to be able to use it. And yeah. my EDC pistol can go in there. The other thing is in regards to the inner belt. So this is also a T-Rex product, T-Rex Arms, and they kind of have that squadron or hypalon sticky material on the yeah. inside, which means that if I do not want to um, run this through my belt loops, not that I'm in mop gear, mm. but if I wanted to actually throw this on, there's a little bit of a sticky material oh, cool. that can go on and I can throw this over everything if need be. So that's kind of the thought process on the full system Safari Land holster, because it's one of my favorites. Everyone's running them at this point. There's a ton of great holster options out there, but Safari Land's tried and true, and it's worked really well for me for years. It has, man. Yeah. So, well, fair enough, man. So, when you're talking about the mag carriers, so what we used to do was, when I first, you know, was especially wearing plates, right, plate carrying and everything else, you've always had your pistol mags off on the side of the hip. Mm. And for you guys that shoot competition, think production division, right, where it had to be on, your, on the side of your hips, it couldn't be in front of the hip bone. And that solely was because when you leaned over, those pistol mags weren't sticking up into your stomach and getting caught under or over top of your plates, depending on how it was set up. So we always had them off to the side. It was the standard thing. Like, you idiot, don't put your mags in front of that. You're stupid. And you're like, oh, okay, I don't want to be stupid. So you put your mags there. Well, we saw the competition guys, and here it is. So the competition dudes, and they kind of waterfall these magazines, right? So this first one is, can I see one of your mags real quick? Yeah. Thank you. So this first one, sits like this. Then the second one is a little bit higher. Then the third one is even more so, right? I'm gonna set that one up, but even more so up and down. So they kind of like started here, then they got a little bit steeper and steeper as you went up. Well, that allowed you to, to bend over. So there's one way that, or one example of stuff that's happened in competition that's translated over to kind of everybody else's stuff. You got it, I got it, you got it. I mean, it's smart, right? So um, I like that, but that was the reason we did it. We always carried them aside couldn't bend over, but they had to be over here. But now that people just were like, why don't I just angled my mag flatter? Just cheated over. And you know, the response to that was, no, that's wrong. You're like, why? <laughs> like, cause uh, it's, you're stupid. Don't do that. You're like, okay. And then two years later, everybody's doing it. You know, of course. So it's funny how that works, but that was really interesting to me. Cool. Well, fair enough guys. Uh, one thing I will say about mine that I've done that I haven't mm -hmm. seen y'all. I actually I stole it from a guy off uh, Instagram, that dirty word. <laughs> I, I offset my buckle. Now, a lot of people, you talk about old-fashioned military, your gig line had to be straight and stuff. The reason why I did that is it gives me a little bit more usability that I can keep stuff away from my gun. It buys me a little bit of real estate yeah. for my tourniquet. I know it doesn't look as professional, but if I offset that, I can get my cuffs right there. And what you were just talking about, being able to bend over, sitting in the car all days, the cuffs ride a little bit lower. They're not pinching my belly mm -hmm. and crushing between my belly and the belt and the armor just moving that offset just a over a little bit more actually found me to be a lot more this belt area right here where the buckle is i was an unused space that i could use it i found it works out really well real estate right just got more options right that's up right in front. it's like carrying appendix versus on the back yeah, sure. so fair enough good man i do the same thing i offset mine um well cool you guys got anything else to add one thing that um i will touch on my department still uses a polyester uniform. Mm -hmm. Some guys do, but I've noticed with the two layer system belt with the Velcro, it really chews up the polyester. So really? you're, yeah, you're replacing the pants more often because the polyester get chewed up. So that's the one reason why I went with this belt. This is just a neoprene sleeve that's attached in lieu of the two layer system and it doesn't okay. chew up the polyester. So that's why some, some guys do it. Some guys just replace their belt more often, but 
that's one thing I found that works for me is uh, the t unfortunately the two layer system I am a big fan of. I think it works really, really well and it does give you that extra layer of security. But unfortunately, if your department, uh, if you're a law enforcement officer, if you're still running polyester pants, it is going to chew up. The Velcro will chew up. You get the polyester. that pilling. Yep. The, yeah. Then you guys shave it and then it just the holes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough, man. All right. Josh, anything else? Not for me. Cool. Well, hey, that's belts, right? Whatever you want to call them. That's kind of our perspective on different types of belts, what they are, and then also the different purposes and why you might set them up. Uh, everybody has a different reason. So it's always a good idea to look around and go, well, I like the way that person did it and that makes sense. At the same time, somebody might set that up for a reason and it's just not, that's what worked for them and it might not work for you. So there's always, you gotta have some autonomy there, right? You gotta be able to do what works for you and don't be afraid to do that, right? Unless it's a really terrible idea, then don't do it, right? But other than that, uh, that's pretty much it guys. Let us know what you think. Tell, tell us what you guys are using down in the comments, put all that out there. And uh, yeah, other than that, uh, the bear belt's the best belt. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tom, you guys got anything else? Any questions, man? Not at the moment. He'll have some later. So he'll have some input later. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Subscribe, all that crap, whatever. Zach, thank you very much for coming out. Buddy. Absolutely. It's man. always a pleasure, my friend. Josh, Thanks thank for having you very me. much. And we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Sounds great. All right, guys. Awesome. See you later. So we're going to break all that down with our two friends. Cover it like that fucking sucked. Belt set up. So today we brought in two of our friends, Josh from Dirty System. Fucking fuck you, Tom. Just straight to it. You, you look. I know I did. I was like, like bah. I like froze. <laughs>